Family Theater presents Art Linkletter and Kathleen Crowley. From Hollywood, the Mutual Network, in cooperation with Family Theater, presents Just Like a Lady, starring Catherine Crowley. To introduce the drama, here is your host, Art Linkletter. Thank you, Tony Lafrano. Family Theater's only purpose is to bring to everyone's attention a practice that must become an important part of our lives if we are to win peace for ourselves, peace for our families, and peace for the world. Family theater urges you to pray. Pray together as a family. And now to our transcribed drama, Just Like a Lady, starring Kathleen Crowley as Peggy. <laughs> When Peggy Finley received word that she could come to America and live with her grandfather, Peggy was elated. She could now say goodbye to the dingy boarding house where she'd lived so long. And she could say goodbye to the florist shop where she worked long and weary hours. She was going to America, and she was going to be a lady. Sure, and doesn't my grandfather live in a ten-room mansion with grounds so big you get lost if you don't keep a watch on yourself? But when Peggy arrived in America, she found quite a different picture. Grandfather's ten-room mansion was an old two-story house on an acre of ground at the edge of town. Grandfather lived in one room on the ground floor. The rest of the house was boarded up. Peggy tried to conceal her disappointment, but Grandfather wasn't easily fooled. And, and you don't like it, me child? Oh, it, it isn't that, Grandfather. You should, if it's unhappy you are and you'd like to be going back to Ireland. Oh, you mustn't be thinking I'm unhappy, Grandfather. It's just a little different from what I expected. But it's my own fault for, for always fencing things up and making believe. <laughs> then you won't believe in me. Of course I won't believe in you. We'll make this house the grand old place it ought to be. We'll open the shutters and let the sun shine in. And we'll have the most beautiful garden in the whole world. We'll open a room and house, we will. We'll make a real home for people. And everyone who comes will find luck and good fortune. <laughs> And Peggy was true to her word. A great transformation took place in the old house. And it wasn't long before she was hanging a sign on the front porch. I beg your pardon. Is that a room for rent sign you're putting up? And that's what it is. But it's a lucky man you'll be if you come here and stay. I'd like to see what you have. This way, please. Upstairs. They're all nice and airy, and, and you won't find a grander view anywhere in the country. Now, this one faces the hills, and it has the most beautiful... Have you anything smaller? No. No, they're all the same size. Uh, I guess this one will do for now. We'll be glad to be having you. And when your luggage comes, Grandfather will be helping you up with it. Oh, there won't be any luggage. This bag is all I have. Well, then, then you won't be staying long. I couldn't say right now. It's all right if I don't go downstairs again, isn't it? I'll... Take care of the rent this afternoon. Oh, sure, and that's all right. Thank you. I'll see you later. Yes? I thought you might like a bite to eat. Oh, nice of you. <laughs> I guess I fell asleep. Now, if you'll just turn on the light. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> I'll put this tray on the table. There. Oh, you, you've been a painting. I dabbed a little this afternoon. It's the view from the window. Oh, it's beautiful. Thanks. It's real talent you have. I told Grandfather as hell I knew you must be a great man. Oh, well, you better set Grandfather straight. I'm just a struggling artist. Never sold a thing. Probably never will. And must be fooling. But if it's the truth you're saying... Then it was the good fairies that brought you here. Because now your, your luck will be a-changing. It's too bad I can't stay. Enjoy some of that good luck. You mean you're leaving? In the morning. Sorry if I've 
inconvenienced you. Well, you haven't done that. But, but the painting, it's so real, like, you ought to be staying long enough to finish it. What for? Add another one to my collection? No. I might as well give up and go back. You mean you're going to stop painting? <laughs> Can't live in a dream all my life. Dreams don't pay the bills. And what else would you be doing? That's just it. What? Oh, but, but if it's an artist you are in your heart, there's no use running away from it. No matter what else you might be doing, there'll always be that call of beckoning you. Mm, so I've discovered. Then you can't be a doing something not to your liking. And if it's the rent that's worrying you, grandfather and me be only too glad to have in you stay. Oh, no, thanks. Oh, we've been raising more food in the garden than both of us could eat. You mean you just let me stay on? And just paint. <laughs> a man can't do a thing like that. Why not if he's a mind to? It would only be his false pride that would keep him from it. Anyone who can paint like that oh, shouldn't be given it off. Well, I've been at it for years. You know, you're a strange girl. You're from Ireland, aren't you? <laughs> sure enough, did you guess? No. <laughs> I mean, you, you haven't been here long, huh? A few months. When I was a little girl, I, I dreamed of coming to America someday and living in a mansion. And here I am. <laughs> sure, and I know what you're thinking. This house isn't much, but, but someday I'll make it the most beautiful place in the whole world. I wouldn't be surprised if you do. And someday I'll be a going down to New York to find restaurants in the theater, just like a lady. You really think the dreams come true, hmm? Well, if you don't let go of them. If you don't let go of them. Hmm. Say, uh, you suppose... There's something I could do around here to help pay for my room and board. Oh, we wouldn't want you to be doing anything. No, no, I wouldn't stay unless there was something. Oh, well, no. The potato patch needs digging. Then I'll dig in the potato patch. <laughs> oh, sure, and I was only a joke. Well, I'm not. <laughs> now you be sitting down and eating your dinner. And we'll be, we'll be talking about it in the morning, mister. Oh, I didn't tell you my name, did I? It's uh, Smith. Martin Smith. And mine's Peggy Findlay. But you can be calling me Peg, if you like. If you'll call me Martin. And why not? Good night, Martin. Good night, Peg. Hey, Peg! Peg, where are you? Here I am, in the Rose Garden. Peg, I sold a painting. No. Yeah, the one with the hills. You know, I sent it into a dealer in New York, and he bought it. It's my first sale. Oh. He wants to see anything else I have, too. Oh, Martin, I'm that glad for you. <laughs> I didn't know that $25 could look so big. $25? Yeah, that's what I got for the painting. But you should have gotten more for it, Martin. Oh, beggars can't be choosers, Peg. Oh, but it's a great artist you are. You shouldn't be giving your paintings away. Yeah, no, that $25 looks pretty good to me. I need oils and things. Well, don't be sending that, that dealer fella the next one you finish. The next one you finish, you take to New York yourself and get what it's worth. Oh, Peg, what would I do without you to scold me? <laughs> Here, I want you to take this check. No, you can't have all of it. Just, just half. And what for? Part payment on the rent. We made a bargain, remember? I was to work in the potato patch. Well, I've been out there twice. Or has it been three times? Oh, now you're talking nonsense. You'll be needing that money to buy things. No, no. A bargain's a bargain. I haven't kept my end of it. Really? Your fault, though, you know. Every time I mentioned the potato patch, you'd send me back to my brushes. Well, now, I'll tell you a little secret. Potatoes is a peculiar thing, and, and nobody can take care of them like Irishmen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm no gardener, but I'll make it up to you somehow. <laughs> now, now, would you, would you hand me... Oh, that basket, Mr. Smith. Uh -huh. I'll be putting these roses in it. Okay. Here. Hey. Wait a minute. What's the matter? Oh, that's wonderful. What? I like to paint that. Paint what? <laughs> you. Just like that. Paint me portrait? Mm hmm Oh, but if I have me portrait painted, I ought to be wearing me new frock and, and sitting, sitting on the sofa in the parlor. Oh, no, I, I want you just the way you are. Your hair a bit blown, sunbonnet on the back of your head, the, that basket in your hand. You mean you want me just natural? Yes. Oh, sure, then I, I won't even powder me nose. So me freckles will show. <laughs> Finished, Martin. 
Uh, just about. Don't move now, Peg. The moment you can look. Uh, all right. Here. I'll see what you think of it. Oh, it's lovely, Martin. Lovely. Oh, I feel I could just reach out and, and pick one of those roses. You know what I'd like to do, Peg? I'd like to take it down to New York and enter it into the national exhibit. Well, then why don't you? Well, it might not win a prize, but I'll bet it would get honorable mention. Then that's what you must be doing. You wouldn't mind. Mine? Well, it's yours, you know. I planned all along to give it to you. Sure, and that's awfully kind of you, but I've been hoping you'd want to keep it yourself. Oh. Well, I'm... I'm going to keep it long enough to take it down to New York. letter came from Martin, it did. Well, it's about time he was writing. He's been gone a long time. Oh, and he's had such wonderful good fortune. He's opened a studio he has, and all the fine people come to have their portraits painted. And did he say why he hasn't written before? Oh, he's been busy, Grandfather. He's been a painting, and he entered me portrait in the exhibit, and everybody likes it, he said. He wants me to be coming down, see his studio. Martin wants to be showing me around New York. But you can't be going down to the big city all by yourself. Oh, oh Grandfather, sure and you wouldn't be stopping me. It's to New York I've been wanting to go. And it's a fine lady I'd be with a, with a great gentleman like Martin to be escorting me around. Well, you'll be sure and let him know you're coming so he can meet you at the depot. Oh, no, Grandfather. I don't want him to be a meeting me. I want to be getting all fixed up first. I'll go to one of those beauty parlors. I will, and I'll get me some new clothes. Oh, Peggy Finley. Sure, and it looks like another one of your dreams has come true. Hello. Hello, Martin. Peg. I'm in New York, Martin. Why didn't you let me meet you? Where are you now? Oh, never mind. I'll be right over. No, 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 no. I'll come after you. But, but I have a taxi waiting. Well, tell him you've changed your mind. Tell me where you are. No, no, no. I want to be seeing your studio, Martin. Perhaps it's busy you are and you're not wanting to be disturbed. No, no, Peg, it isn't that. I've been waiting for you. I want you to see the studio. Oh, then I'll be over in two wags of a puppy dog's tail. Bye-bye. No, wait, Peg, please. Peg! And who was that? It was a girl I know. She'll be here in a few minutes. Mother, please, could we talk some other time? Are you asking me to leave? She's just down here for a few days. I don't want anything to happen to spoil her visit. Oh, and you think my being here will spoil her visit? Now, don't misunderstand, Mother. She and her grandfather took me in when I was down and out, and I didn't give them my right name because I didn't want them to know who I was. That's all. Well, at least you have some respect for the name of Holloway. Martin, what is this girl to you? She's one of the best friends I ever had. She got me back on the right track when I was just about ready to give up. Are you in love with her? No, Mother. I believe you no, are. No, I'm not, Mother. I... Then get rid of her and come home with me. I'm sorry, Mother. I can't do that. But you can't go on living like this. I am very comfortable. This is a nice studio. In fact, I enjoy living here. Oh, enjoy living here after your upbringing. Really, Martin, sometimes I wonder if you're our son. Hmm. I've wondered too, Mother. Wandering around the country like a vagabond. Have you no pride? The men in our family have always been respectable business people. Yeah, but I'm just not a businessman. I guess I'm the black sheep, huh, Mother? I may as well tell you that unless you come home, your father will cut you off without a cent. Well, Dad wishes it that way. Then what about Laura? Oh, I'm doing a painting of Laura. That's, that's it over there. <laughs> what do you think of it? Don't try to change the subject, Martin. I'm giving a dinner tonight for you and Laura. Mother, I am not going to marry Laura, so won't you please... And I expect you to be there. Laura's a lovely girl. Yes, she is lovely, and she's going to make somebody a lovely wife, but not me. How do you know? Because we don't even think alike. We... Martin? Well, there she is, Martin. Oh, Martin. Peg. <laughs> what have you done to yourself? Sure, and I touched the fairy wand. You like me? Oh, Peg, you're like... You're like a breath of spring. Oh, then it was worth all the agony. Tell me, uh, how's your grandfather? How's the potato patch coming along? Grandfather's fine. 
But you couldn't expect me to be thinking about a potato patch with, with a new bonnet on me head, could you? <laughs> of course not. <laughs> it's about you I want to be here in Martin. Well, aren't you going to show me your studio? Oh? Oh, excuse me. Uh, mother, this is Peg, Peggy Finley. Uh, Peg, this is my mother, Mrs. Holloway. Uh, how do you do? How do you do, Miss Finley? I don't wonder you look surprised. My son has just been telling me he never told you he has a family. No, but I guess it's only natural that he'd have a mother. He's also been telling me how kind you and your grandfather were to him when he was seeking inspiration. I'd like to repay you, Miss Finley. Won't you come to dinner tonight with my son? No, Mother. You're not being very hospitable, Martin. I'm sure Miss Finley would enjoy seeing our home and meeting your father and Laura. Peg is here to see New York. Wouldn't you like to come, Miss Finley? Yes, you should. I, I don't know. We'll come out to lunch tomorrow, Mother. This dinner has been especially planned, Martin. It would be difficult to explain your absence. Well, we're not coming. You mustn't let me be interfering, Martin. This dinner is in honor of Martin and Laura, Miss Finley. It's a very special occasion. I'll explain it all to you later, Peggy. And I'm sure you'll like Laura. That's her portrait that Martin's working on. Isn't she lovely? Yes. Yes, she's, she's very lovely. Martin's father and I hope she will become Mrs. Martin Holloway II. Mother. <laughs> Miss Finley's been kind to you, and it's only right that she should know how things stand. I'll tell Peg, but we are not coming out to dinner tonight. I am taking Peg to the theater. You don't have to, Martin. It, it, well, you're sure you don't have to be taking me any place. I just happen to be remembering. It's another engagement I have. Oh, you haven't, Peg. Oh, but, yes, I have. I was only coming by to say hello. And I'd better be going. I wouldn't want to be late. Well, I'm going with you. No, please. I want to talk to you, Martin. I, it's pleased I am to have been meeting you, Miss Holloway, and, and thank you for the invitation. And, Martin, it, it was nice to be seeing you again. I, Where are you staying, Peg? I'll call you. No, no, sure, and you'd better be letting me call you. It's busy that I am. <laughs> Did you see the paper this morning, Peg? Yes, I saw it, Grandfather. Sure, there was a big price Martin got for your portrait, it was. I guess it was winning that honorable mention that done it. I guess it was, Grandfather. And now, will you be bringing me trunk in, please, so I can be packing it? I don't see why you have to be going back to Ireland, Peg. It's a missing you, I'll be. And I'll be a missing you, Grandfather. It seems that's where I belong. And the flowers will be missing you, too. Uh, I, I can't keep them up, you know. And I suppose you'll be boarding the house up again. Why not? I can't be using it all myself. That you couldn't. Well, I'd better be going out and getting down the sign so people won't be coming to look at the rooms. Oh, it seems a pity. And that it does. And I thought it would be all so beautiful. <sighs> I guess I just can't help fancying things up and making believe. Don't you ever stop trying, Peg. Oh, your sweet grandfather. But it makes me hard a little heavy to believe in you. Oh, it's a quiet little girl you've been these last few days. And if it's your gay little self you'll be back in Ireland, then I'm glad you're going. Oh, thank you, grandfather. And now... I'll go out and be taken down the side. I beg your pardon? Is that a room for rent sign you're putting up? Martin. <laughs> you're not taking it down, are you, Peg? And, and that I am. Well, what about all the people who need luck and good fortune, like me? Sure, and you've had your good fortune. And lost it. I tried to find you, Peg. You did? Yes. I couldn't. So the fairies brought me back here. They did? Yes. But, but this time I want to stay. You're painting. I did my best work right here. Your portrait won honorable mention, you know. Yes. I saw it in the paper. But I didn't sell it, Peg. The paper was wrong. I, I kept it. For you. For me? For us. Oh. I'm in hopes you'll let me stay. What about 
Laura. I never loved Laura, Peg. That was Mother's idea. It was Mother and Dad's idea that I should go into business. They didn't want me to paint. Oh, but they were wrong. Yes, but Mother was right about one thing. She said I was in love with you. You think you could learn to love a struggling artist, Peg? I might. With a little coaxing. <laughs> oh, oh, Martin. Oh, Peg, you're wonderful. We'll get married and, and we'll have the most beautiful home in the whole world. Oh, and that we will. And you'll go on and, and on and paint the most beautiful paintings in the whole world. And I'll be so proud. Just like a lady. <laughs> This is Art Linkletter again. I guess I've spent a good part of my life trying to prove that people are funny. And most of the time, discovering that proof seemed to be a pretty pleasant way to make a living. But there's a distinction between funny meaning humorous and funny meaning peculiar. And finding out that some people are peculiar isn't always guaranteed to give you a chuckle. I think, for example, that people are funny in a peculiar way who don't know where to turn in time of trouble. A man who will carry the burden of the world around on his shoulders, worrying himself sick over problems he can't begin to solve alone. To me, he's a funny guy, but he doesn't make me laugh. He just makes me wonder. Because that kind of funny, peculiar person, for some reason or other, won't turn to the greatest source of strength in the universe, the very author of that universe, God himself. Either out of pride or perhaps out of ignorance, he won't get down on his knees. Not even when he feels in his heart there is no place else to go. Yes, too many people are funny in that peculiar way. And yet, because they are people, God's people, there is no reason why they can't get all the help and strength that he can give, since they have only to ask for it through prayer. You've heard it all before. Knock and it shall be opened to you. Ask and you shall receive. And it's true. And here's another thought that makes sense too. The family that prays together stays together. More things are wrought by prayer than this world dreams of. From Hollywood, Family Theater has brought you Just Like a Lady, starring Kathleen Crowley. Art Linkletter was your host. Others in our cast were Lois Corbett, Lamont Johnson, and Herb Butterfield. The script was written by Mary Terry Taylor, with music composed and conducted by Harry Zimmerman, and was directed and transcribed for Family Theater by Lou X. Lansworth. This series of Family Theater broadcasts is made possible by the thousands of you who feel the need for this type of program, by the mutual network which has responded to this need, and by the hundreds of stars of stage, screen, and radio who give so unselfishly of their time and talent to appear on our Family Theater stage. To them and to you, our humble thanks. This is Tony Lafrano expressing the wish of Family Theater that the blessing of God may be upon you and your home and inviting you to be with us next week when Family Theater will present The Unknown. Robert Young will be your host. Join us, won't you? This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.